field shot in Pennsylvania in the fall season a few days back. And we're going to convert it into this black and white image using uh, Silver Effects Pro 2, Topaz Studio 2, and some Tony Kuiper luminosity masking and actions along the way. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let's have some fun. We're going to convert this image to black and white. We're using Silver Effects Pro to do that from the Nick collection. Just to give you a little background, I ran this through a Topaz Denoise AI because this was at ISO 1600, so it had a good bit of noise and it just needed some basic sharpening and Topaz Denoise handled that. Now, I, I'm going to go ahead and launch uh, Silver Effects Pro. I'm going to come up here to filter and just come to the Nick collection and uh, launch Silver Effects Pro 2. Now, I don't have to duplicate the background layer because Silver Effects does that for me. And I love this program, in my opinion. Out of all the various uh, black and white conversion products on the market today, I truly believe that uh, Silver Effects Pro 2 is the very best. This is what the image would look like as a neutral image, just the straightforward black and white conversion with basically the saturation, the color stripped out of it, okay? These are your presets on the left here. And right now I'm set to all presets. I'm just gonna go down through here. I have one preset in mind and that is this one right here. Preset number 12, push process N plus three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this preset. And right away, you can see it's a real dynamic, interesting image, and I really like it. Now, there's a lot of grain in here. So if you don't like the grain, you could come down under film types right here and see where it says grain, grain per pixel. Right now, it's set at 292. If you drag this to the right, you'll eliminate that grain. If you drag it to the left, you'll add grain. And you can add tons of grain in here if you want it. You know, and sometimes for artistic purposes, you're going to add grain. And I'll be honest with you, I like grain, so I, a lot of times I'll add it. But for all of you out there who hate grain, I'm going to get rid of the grain, all right? So let's just shut that grain off. But grain and black and white go hand in hand, okay? So I just want to make a few adjustments here. And uh, let me see. What I want to do is tame these highlights a little bit. So I'm going to pull these highlights back a little bit here. A decent amount, actually. The dynamic brightness. There's some really cool controls. This is the brightness control here. This is a basic brightness. But inside here, you have highlights, midtones, and shadows, and dynamic brightness. Everything is broken down. I love this dynamic brightness. Watch. I'm going to bring this to the left a little bit. And it dynamically kind of like a smart brightness control adjust your image so i'm just going to bring that down a little bit or if i drag it to the right it will increase the uh, brightness dynamically so again think of it as kind of like a smart brightness control so i'm going to bring it down a little bit i don't want to go too too far but i want to i want mood and drama here and i think that looks really good and again i want to just check my highlights so i want to pull them back when I get back in Photoshop, I may tame these highlights down a little bit more. But for now, I think we're pretty good. Uh, let me see what else I want to do here. The structure. I love the structure here, too. Not only do you have a structure control, but it breaks it down into highlights, midtones, and shadows, and fine structure, which is really cool. Right now, with this preset, the structure set at 23. I'm going to pull this back to the left and watch when I do what happens. See how the image starts to get a little softer looking, which looks really cool, right? So if I take this back to say like zero, it gives me a nice, you know, kind of a softened look to the entire image here. So what I might do is just take the structure. I think it was around a 23. I'm going to take it up maybe to like around a five. Just let's just add a little bit of structure. I mean, because structure and black and white go hand in hand but i want to keep the background relatively soft but i want a lot of detail to be brought to my piece of corn here and i'm going to use topaz studio too to add extra detail there all right and that'll be coming up here shortly now this is nice too you have this tonality protection like you can uh protect the shadows here watch if i move this to the right see how the shadows get lifted a little bit here so that's kind of nice. This is a nice control right here. So I may do that. And you also have the uh, highlight protection here. So if I drag this to the right, I'll protect the highlights here. And I've already pulled my highlights down. So we're not seeing much happen here. So I'm just going to leave that pretty much where it was. 
But I think that's looking really nice. Uh, do I want to do anything else to this? There's so much in here. Now, this is not a full tutorial on silver effects, but I just want to do this conversion and show you some of the cool things in here. You have film types. If you click here, you can see you have all these different films that will emulate and things like that. I'm not going to get into that right now. But here's a section I really like, and that is toning. Now, if I click this drop-down menu here, you see all these different tonings you can get. And if you hover over these, look at these really cool tonings you can get. Here's like your sepia tones. Okay. And here's one I like a lot, the selenium tones. This was used back in the day a lot, a selenium toner back in the days of black and white. So I use selenium a lot. On this image, you know, it's some corn, it's country. I think a little bit of sepia is going to look really nice in here. So let me click on just this number 19, this sepia here. Now you can take this strength and you can drag it to the right and give it more or drag it to the left and give it less. I might just give it a little bit less. I just want a little hint of that sepia. All right. And also down here, we can add vignettes. We can burn the edges. So we can do some really cool stuff. But what I'm going to do on this one is add an image border. And look at all these different borders in here that we can add. We have all these different border types. Up There's, what, 14 different borders. And you can just go down through these and see how they look on your image. Like that one looks really cool. But... I'll just go down through here and you can see some of these borders. Um, I think I like 10 on this one. So I'm going to click 10. And then you could open up this image borders here and you got a bunch more things here. Like you can adjust the size of the border, how big you want that border to be. So you got, like I said, this, this particular piece of software is wonderful. There's so much you can do. You can adjust the spread. You can make the edges more rough or cleaner. You can vary the border. Just let it do its own thing. Each time you uh, click the vary button, it'll vary the border just a little bit. And so you can just keep clicking and clicking and stop when you get to the point you like. And a lot of you guys already out there own this uh uh, Nick collection from the past from when you when you know Google gave it out free so pull it back out it's an amazing piece of software for doing black and white conversions now when you're happy with everything all you have to do is click OK but before I do I also want to point out you have control points here you can set up control points and just adjust things uh, locally which is really cool I'll do other videos showing you how that works uh, but for now let's click OK and that'll send us right back into Photoshop and there we will have our black and white conversion. And the next thing I want to do to it is uh, send it into uh, Topaz Studio 2. But before I do, uh, I mentioned when I, when I was in Silver Effects that this area was a little bit light for me here. And I want to tame that down a little bit. So uh, yesterday I showed you on a video or a couple of days back the Go panel uh but today I want to introduce you to the uh, TK7 Rapid Mask Panel. Now, when Tony developed his TK7 panels and actions, this was the original panel, and he still has it today. But now, recently, he's come up with a new update to the TK7 panels, and that introduced us to the uh, Go panel, which I showed you a couple days back. But today we're looking at the uh, TK7 Rapid Mask. See these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These are under the section called lights, and the, these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, are under a section called darks. Now, this is a light area that I want to tone down, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click lights 1. Now, you haven't really seen much of a change, but what I'm doing is making a layer mask, and this is what a lights 1 layer mask looks like. This is what a lights 2 layer mask looks like. It's picking lighter lights now. The light areas are the areas that are being selected. Now, I'm going to click a 3. These are lighter lights. Less area is being selected right now. So I am creating a layer mask at this time. Now I could uh, click this expand here and, you know, expand it up or let's go back to two. And I think two is really good. Now it's getting all these other areas of the border and everything as well. And I'm only interested in maybe this piece of grass and this uh, piece of uh, corn in a husk here. And maybe some of these light areas around here, like this, this piece of grass here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose number two. I'm going to come down here under output and click right here. This what a lot of people refer to as like a hamburger menu or whatever. Okay. 
And then I'm going to go to curves. I'm going to get a curves adjustment. And what I want to do is just, I'm going to drag the right of this curve straight down. I'm going to grab that circle right there, that dot, and pull it straight down. And when I do, see how it's, it's taming down all those highlights in there? So I'm going to take it to about here. I'm going to put a little bit of an S curve on this, like so, just to maintain the contrast in these areas here. So I pulled the highlights or the, or the whites way down here. So I tamed these really highlighted areas here, but it's tamed everything down, right? And I don't want that. So I'm going to teach you a little trick here. And this is called masking the mask. And I've learned this uh, from, I think it was Sean Bagshaw. Uh, but anyway, let's turn our attention to the TK7CX panel. You have this icon right here. See, it looks like a folder. It has a white side and a black side. Now, what this does is I'm going to click the black side of this folder and watch what happens. It puts uh, this adjustment that I just made inside of a group and it puts a black mask on it. Okay, now this is really cool. Now, again, as I said, this is called masking the mask. I know it sounds complicated, but it's very simple. What we want to do is make sure we have white paint. Make sure you have a paintbrush. Make sure you have white paint. I'm going to leave my opacity at 100% and my flow at 100%. And what should I do? I'm going to simply paint white paint over the areas that I want to darken. And you see that? Like here and here, how it just darkens them up. And maybe down here, I'm going to stay off my border. And this piece of grass right here, I want to tone it down. And remember, I told you this piece of grass up in here, I want to tone it down. So look at my mask over here. And you see over here, I toned all those areas down. Now, if I click on this group uh, eyeball here, here's the before and here's the after. But you see how quickly and easily I was able to just to tone that area down. Because again, I want to keep my viewer trained onto this piece of corn. Because to me, this is the star of this image right here. This piece of corn in the husk here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is converge this all together. I'm going to use another one of these Tony Kuiper actions. This guy right here, this icon, I'm going to click it. And it just pulls everything together. And now let's go up to Filter and launch Topaz Studio 2. So then I'm going to go ahead and add some extra detail to the piece of corn in the husk. Let's go up to Add Filter, click on that, and click on Precision Detail. Now, there's a lot of dark areas in here, like in this area of the corn right here. So let's go to Shadows, and let's pull up the small shadow detail. And see how that detail just pops out of there, which is really cool. Let's say give it a little bit of medium dark detail. And I'm only looking at that corn in the husk there, this area right here. Nowhere else. I don't care what's happening anywhere else. I think the large detail is fine. Now let's go to the overall detail. And let's just pull up the small detail there. Let's get a little bit of small detail. Let's get a little bit of medium detail. Too much. Maybe somewhere right around there. Let's see. Let's try the large detail. I don't know. I might just give that a slight amount of large detail. Now let's come up to the layer mask and click that. Come to the three dots right here. Let's invert it to hide it. Put a black hide all layer mask. Let's get a brush. Let's take our transparency the whole way to the right to give us a white swatch of paint. Let's take our softness and pull it in just a little bit. Leave edge aware turned on. And let's keep our radius around that size right there. And now let's just paint the detail on wherever we want it. Now, I definitely want it on the corn right here for sure. Maybe on the edge here a little bit. Maybe something like that. See that detail pop? And that looks really cool, right? And I want some detail here, but maybe not as much. So what I think I'll do is take the transparency, take it back into more of a middle tone of gray somewhere in there and then just paint that on this section right in here. Not gonna go the whole way, but maybe just to here, like so. That looks good with that smaller amount of detail. Now, how about on this corn stalk? Let's try some detail on here as well. Just on this edge right up to say here, like that. Yeah, adds a little bit of detail right there. So here's the before and here's the after. See how our eye goes right to there? Because that's a nice area of detail and our eye will be drawn to it. So if we're happy, let's just click accept. That's all I really wanted to do inside of Topaz Studio 2. And if we felt we went too strong, we could come to this layer right here, layer 1. Let's rename this uh, 
Let's just call it TS2 to save some time here. Let's click this eye off, turn it back on. If we felt we went too far, we can take our opacity. I always like to take the whole way off and then just build it up slowly. And I want a good bit of that on there. So how about around a 96? So here's the before and here's the after. Now here's a good little tip. Type your tab key on your keyboard and you'll get rid of all your panels. So you can really isolate your image and see what it looks like. Isn't that cool? And so you can study it. And if you're happy with it, you're good to go. And then all you have to do is uh, type your tab key again and all your panels will come back. Well, there you go. A black and white conversion using uh, Silver Effects Pro 2 from the Nick Collection along with Topaz Studio 2. Uh, I used the Precision Detail filter there because the Precision Detail, Precision Contrast, both of those filters work really well with black and white images. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I almost forgot. Please leave comments and questions in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you.